Okay, joining me now, MSNBC contributor, Daily News columnist Mike Lupica, and MSNBC contributor and New York Times political reporter Nick Confessori. I'm going to start with Nick, but then I'm going to turn it to you, Michael. So Paul Ryan tells us he voted, and in the truth, in like Harry Potter, Voldemort style, won't say Donald Trump's name. What gives here? Help me. Because he does not want tape anywhere of him saying that I voted for Donald Trump. It's the, it, it's the balancing act they're all trying to do of saying they support the nominee, this random vague person who, you know, who they can't actually name and say his name. Um, I think he's just, it's just avoidance. But I do think he actually wants Trump to be the president. Because I think Paul Ryan calculates that in a Trump presidency, he would be in the driver's seat on policy, which is important to him. So for the highest role in the land, Paul Ryan doesn't want to say who he's voting for because he doesn't want there to be tape. What do you think of that as an American? It's like when somebody gets caught in the barrel and gets publicly shamed in this country. And, and when they do, no, when they Luckily do that. Luckily that doesn't like happen. Lock, no, like with Ryan Lochte, they, they, when he does the confessional, he never says the following. Nick's right, he never says, I lied, okay? Because he doesn't want that piece of tape to be out there forever. So, so it's like the one who cannot be mentioned yes, for Paul Voldemort. Ryan. And it's why he has looked, I know he's in a tough spot here, okay? But I'm tired of hearing about people in politics who are in tough spots. It's why he's looked like a phony on this I'm beginning. sorry, Michael. People or who are in a tough spot are the people in the United States who can't get right. their jobs, who live in places where right. there aren't good schools, where they can't get affordable health care. So to say that Paul Ryan no, is in a tough spot. Stephanie, it's like I get tired of hearing about how James Comey was in a tough spot. Boo hoo. This is this comes with the territory. This comes with the job. And and when I hear, oh, there was no good choice for him to make, yeah, there was a good choice for him to make, which was to shut up and do the right thing. Nick? Shut up and do the right thing. Some people are saying, well, James Comey wants it both ways. He's going to release that they're, they're, they're doing more around Hillary Clinton's emails, but not uh, mention the Russian hackers. So what is James Comey doing here? You know, it's not really clear. The FBI is <laughs> leaking like a sieve right now. I counted three or four stories last night from different organizations saying different things or contradictory things. Um, what you have to imagine is happening is that teams of FBI agents are trying to defend their actions and their investigations into the Clinton Foundation, into the Clinton emails. Um, but it's not supposed to work this way. The FBI is supposed to investigate, and the Department of Justice is in charge of deciding who gets a prosecutor who doesn't. And that's why, as Michael said, you don't comment on these things and why it's dangerous territory to break that rule. You know what else is contradictory? The polls. Can you help me understand, you know, on one hand they're saying Hillary Clinton, you know, she's up by six, things have tightened a bit, but she's got a strong lead, and ABC's got a tracking poll out today saying Donald Trump is up by one. What do you believe? It's a good thing we don't cover teams in sports the way this race has been covered by the punditry, okay? Because it's like watching day traders get hysterical every time <laughs> the thing moves. I, I believe this has been a four or five point race. I don't know what you think, Nick. Wait, 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 actually, it's actually really simple. Follow the averages. Right. Follow the averages. What does that mean? Don't look at individual polls. In any given time, the polling average is the best way to understand the direction of the race and where it's going and where it's at now. And what are they telling us? That it's very close and she's ahead. Yeah, I think I think it's a three, four, five point race. I, I still think that with everything that happened last Friday, it, 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 Nick, it's like if um, you're in the rain and then it rains a little harder. At that point, you're wet. You don't care anymore. So I think people are tuning out most of this email stuff. I still think she's going to win. I still think she's going to get like 300 or more electoral votes unless you know the the FBI director calls another press conference on Friday. The opposition research dump came forth today, the New York Times piece around Donald Trump and his taxes. We heard more about maybe the FBI should be looking into Paul Manafort and his ties to Russia. Clearly this, or one could argue this is coming from the Clinton campaign. Why weren't they pressing these points harder over the last six weeks? This Donald Trump tax issue is a big issue, and we haven't heard about it for quite some time. I would just say, first of all, I'm not sure that story was a dump. That was a product of reporting by five reporters. Taxes are really complicated. Tax policy is complicated. Um, so that was a lot of work, and it flowed naturally out of the scoop we had um, on his tax return from 95. Uh, Look, I'm not sure what, why the focus has been off his taxes, except that with Donald Trump, there are so many things for the other candidate to focus on on any given day, whether it's women or his taxes. I think today we will see actually a pivot from Clinton back to policy on women, on taxes, on conventional points of vulnerability for Donald Trump, because they want to change the subject away from this weird thing with the FBI.
Mike, before we go, Nick is absolutely right to say that it was the, the Clintons behind a New York Times report. I'm wrong. But the Clintons haven't been talking about taxes in the stump speeches over the last few weeks. Why is that? Because I don't think there was ever a reasonable expectation that this guy was going to release his tax returns. I just don't think. You can, you can throw, hold your breath and, and hop on one leg. It's not going to happen. So thankfully, the Times has done this kind of reporting and, and, and at least put a light back on what, what, what I think is a bit way bigger issue than emails. You know, you're absolutely right. I was absolutely wrong there. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.